Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Junkyard TV, and today we've got an interesting video for you. What we're going to be talking about is uh, the alt gauge for a 73 Plymouth Barracuda. Actually, all the E-bodies, 70 to 74, uh, any of them that have an alt gauge or ammeter, have a major problem. Uh, this is what the original ammeter looks like in the back, and you have two positive cables that run all the power from the uh, car, from the alternator, through these wires, and they typically uh, can cause a problem in the old wiring in the, the Barracuda or E bodies in general. Uh, a severe problem, it can actually burn your car up. So, uh, regardless of the fact whether you do the volt uh, gauge conversion, uh, take your wires off your ammeter and, and put them on one post. Start with that. Um, and that will solve so many problems. That's where this whole thing started from. I did not know this. I did not know it was a problem. I've had the car forever. And just reading on the forums, uh, specifically ebodies.org, got a lot of good information on there. And uh, let's stop right there. ebodies.org, uh, there is a great thread on there about this conversion. And uh, it, the title of it is Non Rally Ammeter to Volt Gauge Conversion. And it is by CUDA. A39. He started this thread and it's guided me and it's a fantastic thread. So go to ebodies.org and check that out. Okay, that being said, um, we are quite a ways into this conversion already. As you can see, we have a cutout of our main uh, gauge section there. And this is uh, not quite the typical alt gauge that you would find. I'm going to start with you just go on uh, Amazon and buy yourself an aftermarket voltmeter. Um, I wish I could show you it. I'll put a link in there which one I got but it's going to be 2 and 1 16th inch I believe. Again I will put the link in there to the one I purchased and uh, you can use the guts of that to adapt your ammeter into a voltmeter. This is what the face of it looked like. Now what you do when you initially take uh, your original ammeter off. Again, this is what normally shows in the back of your original. This right here. Just take all that off. Drill out these two rivets right there. Really super easy. And that whole thing comes off. And what that's going to leave you with is a blank um, flat surface on the back of the altmeter here. Now as you can see I have all kinds of stuff going on here. This is the aftermarket voltmeter guts so to speak that makes it work and uh, it's glued on here because you really can't rivet I mean you could put screws through the faceplate of your altmeter but I'm you know trying to keep it as nice as possible. So in the case of the aftermarket one you have these I don't know if you can see it. I wish I had a good pointer. I had a screwdriver here a minute ago and if you can see it right here we have plastic wing here and a plastic wing here and you can keep those perpendicular to the gauge itself and it gives you a good center line and uh, right now the needle is on but you will see uh, just a, a tiny thin needle that, the, that this needle attaches to and you want to make sure that is in the center of the hole and these two plastic wings will help you align that and uh, you can just glue those on and if you notice here I have a couple black pieces those are 3D printed obviously I just did that because there are two more plastic wings here and they had a lot of distance between the gauge and the plastic wing so I just kind of put a support in there I realize everyone doesn't have a 3D printer if you don't this isn't too necessary I think you can get away with just gluing these two sides and you don't have to do any other kind of mold, but I just uh, put in a couple of uh, braces here and I happen to 3D print the correct sizes. You could chisel it down a wood, plastic, file some plastic down, I don't know, whatever, to give yourself four um, mounting points instead of just the two. And that is just black PVC holding the aftermarket volt gauge to the faceplate of the original alt gauge. So that gives you quite a bit of ways to, uh, you know, then you have a functioning voltmeter, so to speak. Then, of course, you got to 
place your needle in the correct spot make sure it's a uh, dead zero and make sure that is glued on because this original this original needle the back of it the pinhole in the back of it is a little too big for the uh, the needle that the gauge comes with so you're gonna have to glue it in there and uh, just make sure you're at dead zero when you do that that way when it gets power you're gonna give you correct readings on the volt gauge and also you may notice I added some numerals there for the volt gauge readings uh, again CUDA A39 on uh, ebodies.org did a much better job of that you can check that thread out there but you know it, it works and uh, I think it'll look fine once it's in the bezel and with the glass covering it so now I have an actual functioning voltmeter attached to my OEM ammeter faceplate so now what obviously we have to attach that to the back of the gauge cluster and you may notice there's been some slight modifications here now I'll get this a little bit closer um, while I was doing this I looked up the term hack in the dictionary and I saw my picture um, yeah trial and error for me I mean I was trying to fit it so just uh, here's part of the original I mean I'm sorry the aftermarket voltmeter so I was thinking yeah cut this down put these uh, in here and that's how I was gonna mount it and that didn't work out at all because it sticks out way too far the gauge sticks out from the bezel you know way too far so I had to readjust my modification within the gauge cluster and the best way to do it is you don't need to cut out that stuff you just want to do a circular cutout and this is where this video is going to help some people I hope is uh, you don't have to hack this up like I did get yourself a circular uh, drill and drill it out to the diameter a little bit larger than the diameter of this so this can slide in completely and unfortunately uh, it bottoms out a little bit too low and that's where I'm at now I've got it basically correct and now I've got to figure out how am I going to mount this to this and I'm going to give you a quick back view of it and uh, I am just going to there's been a lot of glue involved in this modification which is kind of odd but this one kind of you know see how it sticks through the back now I really don't have any way to mount it with a screw through the front this isn't gonna work because there's nothing really to attach it to so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna um, JB weld all around this right here and that's gonna give me a secure latching point and the only difficulty with that is going to be oof, God, I break things as I'm working on things crazy I have to make sure to somehow set this so I can get the depth I can get the depth just right see how it fluctuates there it's got to be out right about there and then I can uh, JB Well takes forever I think I'm gonna pin it down with a, some other type of glue real quick and just get a good uh, solid setting point and then I'll use the JB Weld that's what I'm going to do so that's where we're at um, a complicated uh, conversion modification to say the least that's why I wasn't gonna do this video I mean I'm get caught up in the project that's why it's already halfway in but uh, watching me do all this and, and hack through these things wouldn't have been very fun hopefully this will get you up to speed a little bit if you notice actually there's a positive and a negative and then they, in this particular volt gauge they had a another meter going on there so I just cut that off we don't need that post at all but uh, yeah in a nutshell it's glued on there very solid and uh, just take a lot of care you don't necessarily have to do the mod with the 
numerals but take very good care with your needle make sure when you glue it on there somehow that it's at dead zero and that way when you test it you know you should be just above the 12 mark uh, and then you know 13 6 4 or 13 7 14 7 once the car is running as long as your alternator is working well so that's where we're at I'll come back to you once I get the, the mounts and get it secured and that'd be the last point uh, for this gauge cluster of course we've got the clock coming lots to talk about with that but that's another video so we'll get back to you in a little bit okay I was able to set the gauge into the gauge cluster and I was able to find actually packing peanuts if you can see them kinda stuck back there which gave me the exact height the exact height that I needed to make a uh, flush with all the other gauges and enable the glass to fit on perfectly and it also uh, with the tape stabilized it enough where I could flip it let me show you that real quick where prior to gluing it in I could flip the gauge upside down with uh, it taped and it would keep the correct height and then I could go in and I opted to use the black silicone because I've had really good luck with this stuff it just I've had absolutely nothing that I've used it on that has ever come loose so that's where we're at still uh, it needs some more reinforcement now that I got all this I'm gonna go back in and actually put some more black silicone and uh, but what I have here now is the gauge in its final place and it fits flush perfectly so I'm going to take the tape off I'm going to come in behind here with more of the black silicone and that will seal this in permanently and also with the black silicone if some reason I you know I don't see that I would have to ever take this out but if I had to I could cut out the black silicone um, if I had the uh, JB Weld, it'd be much more difficult to to get out to change whatever if I needed to. I don't see that ever happening. So that's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and reinforce the front of this with more black silicone behind the gauge here, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now we're on the final stages of the alt gauge conversion into an AM meter we have it uh, glued in with black silicone on the back pretty solidly uh, it doesn't look very good but uh, no one's gonna see that and uh, it's in there solid it is not going anywhere um, we're able to add some black silicone through the top just to reinforce it and it looks really good actually uh, with my high-tech mounting devices to packing peanuts I was able to get the exact height from the back of the bezel make it line up with the rest of the gauges and of course for the glass to fit on perfectly so it is mounted more or less and I came up with a, a solution to cover up the back the original um, get that sit there so you can see it a little bit the original alt gauge came with a, a covering I, you've probably seen it earlier in parts of this video I have since dissected it and uh, it fits onto the two the two leads like so supposedly yeah and um, it was just too big we only really needed to cover that circular spot this would work but I ended up cutting it up too much so it wasn't able to work so I came up with a, 
another solution I got a simply a uh, spray paint can cap and I cut it up and I actually used the inner circle part right here I cut all this out around and I used the inner circle parts to manufacture this I kind of supported it a little bit with the black silicone and that fits over just a you know probably a little bit overkill but uh, in junkyardfine.com our mantra is if it's worth doing it's worth overdoing so that's going to fit on there like so and it's going to just give it a little bit more protection I'm going to push that on there all together didn't quite get my drill holes right on that but that's what it's going to look like in the uh, the final mount version um, not pretty but like I said this is the back of the gas or back of the the, the dash gauges so no one's going to see it and it gives it a nice protection and then once we're going to get the the nuts on there it will be all set actually there is uh, another part of this we're going to go into as far as insulation on the on the nuts and bolts here when we do the actual installation onto the car so that's where we're at we're done almost we have a fully functioning gauge that's glued in there and a, bolt, a fully functioning bolt gauge that's glued in there and protected and it uh, looks fantastic we again did the uh, I was thinking also we, we cut out the uh, uh, volt gauge meter numbers but uh, you can go online you can do that pretty difficult to get them in there or go online and get probably a five millimeter uh, decal number set and that might go on there a little bit better but I'm, I'm happy with it we'll see how it looks once it's in the in the car itself so that's where we're at for right now. We'll be back in a little bit for more. And here we have the uh, final installation of the glass onto the gauge cluster. And as you can see, the conversion fits in there perfectly. And that's what you really got to be careful of when you're setting uh, your depth before you glue it in there. Uh, looks really good from the front, right? And from the back we have our makeshift protective cover from a spray paint can and of course all the glue in there keeping everything secure and uh, what's going to happen is um, actually I'm going to pull that back off figure out which one's positive and negative and uh, on the positive side actually that one's negative on the positive post we're going to put uh, both leads that were going to the ammeter are going to go on the positive post here and then we have made a just a basic ground wire that's going to go the ground to somewhere on the chassis uh, actually some polish getting on everything we'll get into that in a minute and uh, so yeah your two ammeter uh, attachments that were on the original ammeter are, are both positive and that's where the problem lies is running all that power through your ammeter and uh, that's what we needed to fix so I'm just gonna instead of splicing it and whatnot I'm just gonna put both those posts on the positive terminal and then run a ground on the negative so that's where we're at we'll get into that once the uh, gauge is installed a uh, real quick side note uh, regarding the glass that goes on the gauge cluster initially I had a, quite a few big scratches on the on the speedometer side and I originally tried the Meguiar's plastics I had some of this laying around and uh, did not work at all so there's that and I bought this stuff the Novus 123 system and this stuff is it's surprising unfortunately nowadays you find something that works I'm not sponsored by anyone I'm just you know telling you what I used and it worked fantastic uh, the number three gets out the big uh, scratches and there were you know two three big scratches especially in the spider these were all just fine scratches in here and this stuff took them all out I mean that looks fantastic it looks all the all the fine scratches are out and all the deep scratches are out so I highly recommend the polishes Novus one two three po uh, plastic polish system so it's just a quick shout out to them not for anything not for any money just because it works
All right, here we are in the CUDA, and we're talking about the ammeter conversion into a voltage meter. Now, as you can see, it's installed completely, and uh, we got the dash bezel on there in the glass, and it looks really good. We got the uh, voltmeter numbers on there, the 10, 12, and 14 were added, and uh, looks pretty good, showing the correct voltage from the battery when the car is just sitting about 13 a little over 13.7 it looks like which we're at where it's supposed to be and it's always on I've used the uh, the two positive posts that were on the original ammeter I just stacked them on top of each other for the positive power and ran a negative lead to the uh, to the dash and it works fantastic I you know it's gonna draw power constantly but uh, if I have the CUDA sitting at any period of time I have a negative disconnect on the battery so that's not an issue, and it doesn't draw that much power anyway. But it uh, looks pretty good, and then we can start the car. Obviously uh, shows the correct voltage there. A little over 14, 14, 14.7, right in there, 14.6. So it's a great little mod. Um, a little bit to it, as you can see by the previous video, but it's worth it. Get the ammeter out of there and make your car a little bit safer. And still have the functionality within the dash gauges. I, I like all the, I mean that gauge hasn't worked for years and I've finally got a fully functioning uh, dash cluster. you got the clock working, that's a quartz conversion, so that's not going to be drawing any power, but that's working fantastic and it looks looks like it should, looks like it did in 1973. So Junkyard TV signing off on the alt meter to volt meter conversion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it'll help you out. So come uh, come by and check out some of my other videos. Junkyard TV. Thanks. Bye.